Uh, what did she mister. call her? Oh, oh, mister. Throwing your money, all your life away, and the right amount of money with it. Yeah. 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 Reminds me of the prodigal son, mm. who no. was so eager to receive his inheritance, went and asked his father ahead of time while his father was yet still alive to give him his portion. He gave it to him. He's wrong to begin with, but he gave it to him out of a loving father's heart. And he went, and that boy squandered every penny that he had. He literally threw his life away. He was there in the pagan city eating from the trough of the pig. Understand that as a Hebrew, as a Jew, then pigs, you can't touch them. You, if you even get near them, you are considered unclean. Yet here we find this Jewish boy eating from amongst them. He then, the Bible says, came into himself. In other words, he remembered who he was. And he decided the slaves in my father's household are eating better than I'm eating. Why not go back and sell myself to my father and tell him I'm sorry and to tell him I would like to work for him instead? This is the thing. You might be with, I don't care where you are really, you can be amongst the pagans, you can be in the world, you can be eating the slop of this world and, and, and dibbling and dabbling in anything that you choose. But when you come into yourself and remember who you are, yes. something in you got to change. You got to remember that you are a king's kid. Yes. And it don't matter how far you have fallen, that your father is still yet there waiting to receive you. That yes. you can always come home. That you can always eat better at his table even as a servant even as a slave than you ever will out here amongst the world i don't care where you've been where you're going where you came from god has called all of us home to be his children and he said and this is what happened when the prodigal son came home his father ran to greet him the thing is your father is not sitting back wanting to discourage you when you come home see you coming and say oh here they come i told you so but he's yet waiting to run to you to hold you to grab you up how far you gone is no it, it, it's no comparison to how far your father will go to meet you to harm 
argue. Just like Haman had to hang on that stake, every single last one of your enemies is going to hang exactly yeah. where they're trying to put you. And so yeah. mark my word on it. The grave that they planned for you is the grave that they about to ride in.
but I like the story that goes along with this. See, 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 friendship sometimes has ups and downs, does it not? See, yeah. see, Peter was right with Jesus, even to the point where he didn't want Jesus washing his feet. Say, no, no, bro, you can't wash my feet because because we we close, we friends. You're not beneath me, and in fact, I'm beneath you. And so you can't wash my feet. And Jesus said, Well, listen here. He said, I will go with you wherever that you want to go, even to the point of death. He said, You're gonna deny me three times. Before the evening has in, for the uh, crop, uh, cock crows, for the evening is over. And no, I want Jesus. No, I want Jesus. This is supposed to be his best friend. In any case, by the evening time and by the time that the cock crowed, he had denied him three times. Jesus had been taken into custody and he was hanging on the cross. Peter was nowhere to be found. Understand this, sometimes your, even your friendships will go through ebbs and tides. Your yes, friendships God. will go through the high points and the low points. But that doesn't mean, see, a friend is somebody that you don't have to talk to every day to maintain friendship. A friend is somebody that you can talk to every four, five years and still pick up right where you left off. Somebody that you don't have to be all in their inbox every two, three seconds. But somebody that you can literally just kind of put on the wayside and when you need them, call them. Because when they need you, they can call you. Yep. And Peter, when the nitty really hit the gritty and Jesus came back and when he revealed himself that this thing was true, Peter was then the main one to go out into, uh, on Pentecost morning, to go out into the, the square and preach Jesus amongst all the Jews. Listen here, some of us, we put friendship on the wayside because we th think that the friend didn't do us right and the friend didn't do this right or whatever the case may be. You think about Jesus the next time you start putting people on back burners because they didn't do exactly what you wanted them to do. Surely Jesus was had Peter, his best friend, at that foot of the cross with him, but he was nowhere to be found. And sometimes friends are seasonal. Sometimes friends got to do what they got to do in order to elevate, to be who you need them to be when you need them to be in. Jesus, Peter had to go through that season of denial so that he could be Peter the Apostle come Pentecost. And so think about that the next time you say, well, I don't like them no more. They're not doing what I need them to do. They're not acting the way that I need them to act. It might just be their season of denial right now. Maybe this is what they need to go through so that they will be who you need them to be when you really need them to be. This is just, this is, this is fun. <laughs> you all right over there? I'm good. All right. It's hot, though. Oh, I'm fine. Mommy. Mommy. No. <laughs> You're not on the hot seat. Right. Mommy. So why can be on the hot seat? Mommy. This seat hot every day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did y'all drink it all? <laughs> no, I'm good. All right. All right, we're going to go back to the color purple, save a few from there. Now us never. This is being filmed too, right? <laughs> yep. Yes. Now us never be apart. That was in the beginning when they were when when the sisters were they put that heart in the tree. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Now us never be apart. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me take a sip of water. <laughs> In sales, that's thinking of something. Yep. You said a war. I mean, there's so many different places that you can go with this. Let's take it to the Holy Spirit. All right. Jesus says that I, if I abide in you and you abide in me, that's connection. That is allowing the Spirit of God to live inside of you, to take up residence, to dwell. We are said to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, which means that we are connected to God. You know that when you come to Christ and you pray that God enter your life, 
that the spirit literally takes up residence inside of you that is and becomes your counselor. That's why, see the thing is, I say this all the time, Christianity is an inside out religion. We've tried to turn it into an outside in religion because we, we wanna put people on a time scale. We want people to react to Christianity the, in our time and not in God's. But if the Holy Spirit is who the Holy Spirit says that the Holy Spirit is, then, then the Holy Spirit should be a counselor should be a convictor, should be one that will that will reconcile within an individual. And so the thing is, we're an inside-out religion, which means that once the Holy Spirit gets in you, all of a sudden it starts to do a work in you. You can't do the things you used to do. You can't say the things you used to say. All of these things begin to change. What we've tried to do as far as Christianity is concerned, we try to do it opposite like other religions. You change this about yourself. You change that about yourself. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. Uh, don't go here. Don't say this. Don't wear that. All of these different rules and regulations. But the thing is, if the Holy Spirit is in you, you won't be able to do all of the do's and the don'ts. You won't be able to, to because something's going to convict in you. We got to allow folks, the Holy Spirit, to do what the Holy Spirit says that the Holy Spirit can do. Yes. See, the thing yes. is, a lack of faith in faith leaders, a lack of faith in Christian leaders that the Holy Spirit really can do what the Holy yes, Spirit right says. There. The thing is, the change of heart comes only through the Holy Spirit's unction. It doesn't come through the rules and regulations that we set. It doesn't come through the law. It comes through the Holy Spirit only. And if you're not allowing people and allowing the spiritual work in people, well, that's a lack of faith on your hand. Right. That's a lack of right. faith on you. Allow people, allow God to do it in his time. You can't put a time limit on God. Oh, well, they should already be sanctified by now. They didn't came to Christ six months ago. Why is it that I still see them doing X, Y, Z? They need to have a rule or regulation on the outside that's going to change the inside. No, buddy. They have the Holy Spirit on the inside, which will eventually change the outside. Yeah. If the Holy Spirit is who you say the Holy Spirit is. Anybody want to throw a, a color purple line out there? Oh, I got one. I got another one. I'm not going to sing it, though. Uh-oh. No, I'm not going to sing it. I'm something. I hope you think that you're something, too. Yes. Uh, now you sing it. <laughs> oh, sister. We're two of a kind, so. We are in Christ new creations. That's where I would be going to. Jesus said that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Think about that for just a second. When you take something, let's say you, you take a, 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 a Bible and you place a piece of paper inside of it, inside of it, and you close it, now all of a sudden that paper is encapsulated by the Bible, you can no longer see the paper inside. The thing is, the, what makes us brand new is the fact that when we are covered by the blood of Christ, that when God looks down on us, he can no longer see us. He only sees his son. That's right. You are covered by Christ's blood, which makes you brand new. Amen. There, 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 there's something in having the knowledge and the assurance that you are somebody new, that you are covered by Christ, that you are covered by the blood, because then you begin to act different than you did yesterday, knowing that you're covered. No, then Paul said it best. He said, do we continue to sin and allow uh, uh, grace to abound? Heavens, no. We don't continue to sin and let grace to abound, but there's something in the freedom of knowing that you are covered by Christ. Something makes you want to do something just a little bit different. Uh, something more than you want to talk just a little bit different. Why? Because I'm encapsulated by Christ. I, I want to walk just a little bit different. Why? Because I'm encapsulated by Christ. I, I want to act just a little bit different. Why? Because I'm encapsulated by Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, meaning the old man has died and
and the new man has come. I have become brand new in Jesus Christ. I'm not the person that I was yesterday. I wasn't the person that I was 10 days ago, 3 years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I am brand new. Don't let nobody take you back to who you used to be. Yeah. Stay right where you are, encapsulated in Christ. I'm telling you, there's something about being in Christ Jesus that makes you feel and act brand new. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Yeah. What she said. What she said. Michael, I, I won't. Imitation mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You good? Here's one. It's going to rain on your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God today. Mommy, I do. <laughs> Mommy, that's a preacher saying right there. You know, in the Bible, in the book of Second Kings, I want to say it is, God called the drought upon the land. King Ahab at this time was in charge. He was ruling the nation at this point in time. And their prophet Elijah had prophesied that there would be rain in the coming days. He sent his servant to look out and to find and see if he saw anything and, and the prophet and the prophet servant said, no, I don't, I don't see anything. And seven times we we're told that, that he bent down and he crouched down and he said, go back and see. And he bent down, he crouched down, he said, go back and see. Until later on, he came back on the seventh time. He said, I see a cloud coming in the distance about the size of a man's hand. And then uh, that is when the prophet Elijah told Ahab to go ahead and head back out so he doesn't get stopped by the rain. See, sometimes it is important for us to know when the dry season is about to be over. There is always going to be seasons in this life and, and drought seasons last but for a small portion of time. There will be a rainy season in your life. There will be nourishment coming. And the thing is, you just have to have enough faith to keep looking out beyond the horizon and saying, do I see it coming yet? Do I see it coming yet? Do I see it coming? God said it's going to be so, then it's going to be so. Do I see it coming yet? Because eventually you will see something pop up from the horizon. And though it may be small, it will behoove you to get on your horse and go ahead and saddle your donkey and get down before the rain because God is about to pour out a blessing on you and your household hey. so that you are not having a room to receive it. If you don't believe me, just ask King Ahab who had to saddle his donkey and get down before the rain. Why? Because the rain was coming and that meant the plants were about to grow. The rain was coming and that meant that everything that was dead and dry was about to spring forth with new life. And right now you might be sitting in a drought. You might be sitting in a dry place. But in just a little while, I hear the spirit of God. I hear the sound of rain in your life. And I hear that God is saying, just look out into the horizon. Because something is coming up and it is about to drench you. It's about to fall on yeah. you. You're about to be blessed. You're about to have increase. You're about to have prosperity in a way that you have not seen in a while. In a way that you have not seen in your life. You are about to experience a supernatural move of God. about 
I want to say it's in the, we're talking about the prophet Elijah again, so it's probably going to be found in the book of 2 Kings, 1 Kings, somewhere around that, that time frame. But there was a Shumanite woman mm. who had prayed to God for a son. And, and and the prophet said, you will sure enough have yourself a son. Yeah. And that son, was, as he was growing older, ends up dying. And so the boy died, and they went and sent for the prophet and said, come on. The, or why did you tease me like you did? I prayed and I prayed for a son, and you yeah. said I would have a son, and I had a son. And now as soon as you didn't gave me a baby, now you've taken the baby away. Why did you treat me like this? Why did you tease me like this? And the prophet Elijah went to the woman and took the boy up to his room, laid the boy out on the bed. But watch this. While the man died on top of that woman, the prophet Elijah laid on top of that boy and life was put inside of that boy. The tables were turned because when Elijah breathed, the Bible says hand to hand, arm to arm, mouth to mouth. And when Elijah breathed into the boy, he had new life. God is going to breathe new life into the
All right, we're gonna do one more for a moment. We're gonna do it, well, we got a little while. Seely, you hear me calling you? <laughs> I couldn't use a microphone for that one. Seely. <laughs> so that's when she was reading the Bible and Mr. Uh, was calling her and she was too engrossed and actually wasn't reading the Bible. She was reading letters, letters. to it yeah. was stuffed in yeah. the Bible though. Yeah. So yeah. she was standing in the field outside the church and it was stuffed inside of the Bible reading letters from her sister. Seely, you hear me calling you. I remember in the book of Samuel, the young boy, Eli, you know what I found was so strange that I hadn't even noticed until just recently? The young boy Eli was actually asleep in the holies of holies. He wasn't asleep on the outside. He was right in front of the Ark of the Covenant. For whatever reason, he was allowed to go behind the veil to sleep. And he was, and not Eli, it was Samuel rather. The young boy Samuel was allowed to sleep behind the Ark of the, in, in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And as he was sleeping, he heard his name, Samuel, Samuel. And he jumped up and he ran to Eli, who was the priest at the time, and said, did you call me, Father? And, and Eli said, no, I didn't call you going back to bed. And he went on back and he went back to sleep. And, and, and he heard again the voice calling his name, Samuel, Samuel. And he rose up again and he went and he said, uh, did you call me, Father? And he said, no, I didn't call you. And he went back again and fell asleep and heard it again. And, and he said, by that time, Eli got wise. And he said, the, the Lord is talking to this boy. And so he, he said, listen, the next time the voice calls you, I want you to say your servant is listening and, and answer the voice and allow the voice to say whatever the voice needs to say to you. I like this, what Bishop Barry said one time. He said, why do you think that Eli or that Samuel thought that it was Eli calling because the voice of God often comes through your leader's mouth. And so the voice of God is going to sound like the voice of your leader to you. See, the thing is, the voice of God didn't come as something that sounded strange, but it came as something that sounded familiar. Out of the mouth of your leader should come the voice of God. And, and so when, the, 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 when God called for Samuel, he heard it through Eli's voice, something that was familiar, that was his father, that was the one that was raising him, that was the one that was grooming him, that was the one that was molding him, and Eli told him, go back and ask, I'm your servant and I am listening, and right now you should be hearing the voice of God coming and proceeding out of this mouth, because if I am your pastor, then something should be nourishing in your body, and God should be speaking through me, I, I, I should be a nourishing voice to you. I, I should be an encouragement to you. At the same time, I might even be someone that is a chastisement to you. But any way that it goes, it should still be the voice of the living God that is coming through this vessel to nourish you and to help you grow. It should be the voice of the living God that is coming through this vessel to allow you to hear and to confirm to you. I don't proclaim to know everything, but there should be some type of affirmation that comes through. There should be some type of confirmation that comes through the word of God on a Sunday morning that pertains to your life. There should be some type of confirmation that's even coming through this right now on a Wednesday evening that's affirming and confirming what you already know through God, through your own study and your 